All right, y'all look at the thumbnail. Y'all see the title. And today, yes, we got finally, we got it. Browser. I would call him AKA King Cooper because I'm used to calling him King Cooper. I've been calling him that since I was little. King Cooper versus Eggman. You already know Eggman, Mario versus Sonic, Death Battle, bro. Now, like I said, who I said, I, most likely I'm probably going to give it. I like Mario, I like Nintendo, but I'm, I, I'm going with Sonic on this one. I guess, you know, it's Browser versus Eggman. So most likely I, probably, I, I, I might give it to Eggman. Cause you know I got Sunnit, bro. I got Sunnit tap, bro. I got my Sunnit tap, bro. I got my Sunnit tap, bro. Aim see it, but I got my Sunnit tap, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. I probably lean towards that, but honestly, I don't know who will win, bro. I really don't know, but I'm here for it. Let's check it out. How y'all day been? Let's get to it. Let's go. Battle is sponsored by Marvel Snap and Prize Picks. Oh, it's a lot of them. Oh, it had boom. versus Dr. Eggman, the king of the Dr. Co Eggman. Koopas and the baddest of badniks. And they're not alone. He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Okay. I see King Boom. Ah, the Mushroom Kingdom. A peaceful land of kindness, adventure, love. Ah, oh, boring! Move aside, princess! It's time this place got way more awesome! Here comes King Koopa himself! In his, in his troops? Known as Bowser! The moment this orphan star child was found by Kamek, it was clear Bowser would command the disparate outcasts of the mushroom world. The Koopa Clan. Sadly, not everyone's born a toad, and they treat these critters like monsters, fated to a life of infinite jump farming for one-ups. <laughs> Bowser wanted a different world, but Princess Peach Toadstool would never allow the evil king's day in the sun. Her light was so bright, Bowser became infatuated with her. So he turned all the toads into bricks and kidnapped her, putting their princess in another castle, and another and another, like 40 years of castles, only to be released if she agrees to marry him and his dad, bud. Yet he was foiled time and time again by those pesky Mario brothers. However, Bowser is nothing if not persistent. Look at him! Dude's built like a brick house strapped to a saw trap. That spike shell takes a lot of punishment. Not even the weight. Yeah, of like you get if, if Edmund get hit by them spikes, bro. Come on, that also he also can use that for his you know event. Castle can scratch it, especially when he rolls up like a prehistoric Beyblade. And the Koopa King doesn't just breathe fire and oh, he, I forgot he got lava. That. He commands nature itself, spitting meteors from outer space, beckoning the earth with a snap, right, inhaling torrents of wind, straight up calling down lightning. What else has he got? Oh, just a little dabbling in dark magic. Hell yeah. Wizard Turtle. The original NES manual. Hold on now, bro. I might take the dub for this one. Even describes him as a sorcerer king. Magic is how he turned the toads into bricks, only countered by the princess's heart magic. But that's not all the magic he's mastered. Telekinesis, creating perfect clones, reanimating his undead skeleton, and worst of all, ruining every game of Mario Party. Hey, no, 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 no! I spit all those coins fair and square! Bowser spent decades hoarding treasures. Coins, magic star rods, warships, clown cars, you name it. This is the same guy that created multiple flying castles fashioned after his own face. Yeah, he's definitely got an ego on him. He's talked about having a four-digit IQ, but I've seen this moron put death traps in his own backyard. A man after my own heart. Despite his clumsiness, Bowser's charisma and leadership brought many to his side. Not enough to defeat Mario, but his army doesn't make it easy on the Red Plumber. They're the most wicked band of misfits this side. I like on that Goomba. Of World 8-4, the Koopa Troop. An army spanning multiple territories across the Mushroom World and beyond. Goombas, Koopas. Goombas, I, lo I love the Goombas, bro. I don't know, I just love them Goombas, bro. Koopas, the Troopas, and the others. Oh, and them football, on the football. Oh, yeah, I love the Goombas, bro. I like these Goombas thing, bro, since I was little, bro. I like these things the infantry some with wings some in shoes and some even in race cars they're the red shirts first in and 
first out. Piranha plants, bloopers, and lakitus use their surroundings to get the jump on unsuspecting prey by land, sea, or sky. We'd be here forever jotting down the small fries. Booze, shy guys, sentient. But I love Sonic shy guy too, man. We can't get about the little, on the foot, the little football things that they're on the uh, sleepy thing, whatever. With feet and more. It yeah, was the football things. <laughs> imperative for Bowser to nurture a unit that covers their own vulnerabilities. For example, Kamek and King Boo both have magic. See, King Boo, see, I forgot about King Boo and Kama. Kama. Boo has battlefield control with illusions and destabilizing dimensions, while Kamek focuses on buffing allies, canceling enemy powers, summoning anything he desires, or swapping my items to screw up my Mario Party lead. Not again. Speaking of items, most of the minions can use pretty much any power-up Mario can. The Goombas make frequent use of Tanuki Tails, and Bowser can really get into the cat role play. But as the Koopa Troop grew and grew, it started to feel less like an army and more like a family unit. Oh, you mean like his kids, the Koopalings? Eh, they're adopted. What's the difference? Good point. Bowser took them in and even trained them in dark magic. Though no one's as spoiled as his natural Nepo baby, Bowser Jr., captain of the Koopa Troop. Spoiled is an understatement. Remember his escapades as Shadow Mario? He terrorized Delfino Plaza with literal evil paint. That whole debacle was basically his attempt at elementary school art class. And I bet Bowser still has some on the fridge. But really, the king is very protective of his kids. If the fam's in trouble, he can will himself to transform into a giant kaiju, all to crush whatever bullies tug and smack. Maybe a little overkill. Just one punch from giant Bowser launched a castle out of orbit. Taking into account the flight path and the scale of their universe, Bowser's punch must have hit with a force of over 125 trillion trillion tons of TNT. Considering how Yoshi punted poor Raphael the Raven so hard he exploded into a constellation of stars, this isn't even close to Bowser's full strength. So don't bully his kid, especially if he falls into some of Bowser Jr.'s set of black paint. That stuff's scary. Enough to unleash Bowser's dark fury a form whose very steps cause widespread natural disasters. Okay, seriously, how does Mario ever oh, beat this guy? He's like Godzilla, Doctor Strange, and John Cena all in one big turtle. Uh, we're not even to the best part. Bowser's dark magic became so potent he eventually learned how to warp the very fabric of reality. Anything the king imagines, he makes happen. He turned all of Yoshi's Island into a storybook. And remember those painted worlds in Mario 64? Yeah, he made those. And the staircase that goes on and on and on and on. Oh, infinite staircases. On and on and on and on. Oh, God, does anyone know how to BLJ? He also stole ultra powerful items like the Wonder Flower, which can mold reality like Play Doh, and the Dream Stone, which can be used to wish someone out of existence. But Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Most iconic thefts are those big shiny power stars. Don't judge a book by its cover. Infant power stars, aka Lumas, can become whole galaxies. They also ferried Mario across the universe in three seconds. That's 489 yeah, that's fast. Nine quadrillion times light speed. Obviously, the Big Daddy Grand Stars are even crazier. Bowser used one to power his space kingdom, but then guess who showed up to ruin everything? It's a him! And when the Grand Star was freed, it caused a chain reaction that destroyed the entire universe via a massive black hole. Thanks, Space God, that Rosalina showed up to save the day. Not that Bowser needed saving. He's been swallowed by another black hole and thrown into a star that went supernova. Imagine if this crazy OP fire turtle... So basically, King Cooper cannot be die, bro. Cannot die. Turtle had to fight himself. Oh, wait, he did, and he beat the hell out of him. With all this power, or it's a wonder he still hasn't conquered the Mushroom Kingdom. Perhaps it's because his visions of grandeur were never really what he sought. Surrounding him is a crew of outcasts and miscreants like him, ride or dies that can't be swayed against him. Oh, are you saying he's secretly happy because he's got a big monster family now? Yes, but also when they actually work together, they legitimately conquered most of the known universe. So. He's a baddie through and through who will teleport through space and time to show you what's what. Because he's no ordinary Koopa. Make way for the king. Like that. This battle is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best to get into. Big. He the sim got a crazy ass today. Prize citizens of Earth, lend more game. All right, Eggman. Citizens of Earth, lend me your ears. Imagine a world of endless possibility where people are free as the wind. Isn't it?
disgusting? Now imagine a better world, one with proper guidance and the technology to bring about global peace. But Wiz, only a brilliant mind can make that happen. Not just any brilliant mind, he's a genius at heart who knows the dangers within. He's Ivo Robotnik. Dr. Eggman. As a mad scientist myself, his story is my inspiration, just as Eggman's was his grandfather, Gerald Robotnik, who sought to create world peace through technology. But then his beloved granddaughter, Maria, was killed by the Guardian Unit of Nations, better known as... Gun. They're freaking called G-U-N. Anyway, Lil Eggy grew up a lonely narcissist because all his family talked about was Maria this, Maria that, boo hoo. Neglect and envy tainted Ivo's goals of following Gerald's footsteps. He distanced himself from his grandfather's legacy. Instead of bettering the world, he would conquer it to get the attention he deserved. No, you mean craved. Desperately craved. Eh, tomato, tomato. You just said it the same way twice. He aimed to establish Eggman Land, a capital of science. And this paradise would have worked just- I like how they be drawing him though, bro. That's hard. Fine, if not for that blasted Sonic the Hedgehog. For years, Eggman's plans literally blew up in his face. And he's a very sore loser. But just like any good experiment, the doctor did more testing, seeking better results. He's created plenty of knickknacks to terrorize the world with. A laser gun, a cloning ray, mind control cannons, a flying armada, typical evil scientist stuff. Son is hero right there. Then there's the big ones. He invented a spatial displacement trap, which, while online, scatters the target's atoms across space. Oh, and then there's the metal virus, which transmutes organic tissue into living metal zombies. It's so deadly, it created a plague that nearly wiped out all life on Earth. Jam Eggman never made himself immune to it. That's a whoopsie. And when he's not duping you with decoys, he's riding in style with the Eggmobile. It's lightweight for maneuverability, but tough enough to withstand moon-sized explosions and even the center of a black hole. I mean, it's kind of lame looking, but he can plug it into big bad mechs like the Egg Walker or the Death Egg Robot, whose giant laser once obliterated 77,000 cubic meters of rock in an instant. That's like having an atomic bomb in your pocket all the time. Oh, okay, maybe this guy's pretty cool. Eggman built machines for a long list of combat. Yeah, I like when he built machines, though. Situations. Some look like knights. Others use extraterrestrial sources like the Wisps. And then there's the orbital bases, like the Death Egg. The reference is obvious, but Darth Vader's version is like a toy compared to the Death Egg, which can annihilate stars. Woof! A whole constellation gone in one shot. That's not to say Eggman doesn't enjoy scrapping with blue hedgehogs himself. Enter the Egg Dragoon. Hell yeah! The rawest of the battle mix. It's got electric drills. It's got ice missiles. It's got a whole lot of bullets. My God, Wiz. I need it. And don't forget, Eggman built all of these things himself. Maybe world domination is in his grasp yet. One problem. Eggman's a turbo loner. No hobbies, no friends, no wife, no nothing. Come on, he has friends. I mean, he's a feminist. Oh, okay, maybe not. But what about Infinite? Sure, they might have joined forces. Oh, Melisonic. Is over a mutually sought revenge against Shadow, but it counts, sort of. Who needs friends when you can build friends? Obviously. Well, that's. I mean, well. Eggman has a tough time collaborating with others, so he just built his own army instead. The Eggman Empire. The Badniks are mass-produced foot soldiers. Buzz bombers, crab meat, scatter killers, egg robos, and don't forget those cute little moto bugs. The Badniks may seem simple, but they're led by an elite, multi-talented unit. The hard-boiled heavies. Really leaning into the egg thing, huh? The army has a wide variety of troops, even your classic comedy duo with Orbot and Cubot. They're Eggman's assistants and immense disappointments every genius has their duds hey at least they're not scratching grounder hey i like them i remember them but that's why he's made top-notch bots modeled after the sonic cast like everyone's favorite robo faker metal sonic bro god dog dang too dang broken metal sonic metal sonic has the most horsepower in the eggman empire he has the moves and speed of sonic and then some he's had his rebellious phases but eggman's reprogrammed metal to better follow his commands additionally when upgraded to his neo form metal sonic could copy biological data including unique powers like shadow's time stop technique chaos control he could even copy silver's psychokinesis and with enough chaos energy yeah this is definitely gonna be eggman on trump card 
he powers up into Super Neo Metal Sonic. Though Ooh. everything would change with the appearance of the Phantom Ruby, one of many trump cards at Eggman's disposal. Oh, like any good daddy, gave her the keys to his car, his spaceship, and his orbital death ray. Hell, now she controls the entire army. And this frankly unheard of trust from Eggman became crucial in defeating the End, a primordial entity so mighty even Supersonic struggled against it. Their battle can only be described as peak fiction, because charged by seven Chaos Emeralds, Supersonic's no joke. The power of one Emerald can shift continents. All seven together can shift the universe. And kill some pretty terrifying bosses, like Eggman's Time Eater, which ripped apart space-time like tissue paper. In short, Chaos Emeralds give thoughts power. With them, Eggman's best machines can run indefinitely while matching the greatest powers ever seen. Like when three supers battled Solaris, who tried to destroy time itself. Solaris extended its chaos across multiple timelines in about 20 seconds, or 73 quadrillion times light speed. It's funny though, while Eggman's smarts have sort of defeated Sonic here and there, he's pretty effective when he teams up with the Blue Blur to save the world. Well, recall how Professor Gerald was a good person before losing the granddaughter he loved. In Eggman's case, now that he has Sage, perhaps a similar story is playing out in reverse. Nah. That background sound good. Nah. Eggy will always have a harebrained scheme behind his cufflinks. So watch out, critters and plebeians of the world. He is the Eggman, and he's got the master plan. Wiz, you gotta help me! What happened now? Uh, one with it. Amazing three. And stealth good. Who cost? Dinosaur. The app store good. Throw the like button. All right. The okay. I'm going with Eggman on this one. Even though browser might. I'm going. I'm getting Eggman, bro. That's our set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Let's see. <laughs> Got King Budo, man. I've come to make an announcement. This territory is now the base for my upcoming Eggman land, too. What a joke. <laughs> I am Dr. Eggman, your new genius overlord. Get the load of this. Oh yeah, we in, we fine. Game versus game. Invasion force? That seems so stupid. That's a decoy, the idiot. Get for that! This power is without peer. It is the ultimate strength. Ooh! 
I knew King. I didn't see that 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 boom, that King boom. I knew it. Then he got the football thing. It's the football thing. Oh, Metal Sonic. Woo! Wait a minute. Mm, mm. You lost the battle before it has begun. Excellent work as always, Metal. Ready to wrap this up, Sage? As you command. You know what they say, the more the merrier. <laughs> oh, God, it's getting nasty. Showtime. God. Good support, bro. Oh, God. Oh. Oh my! Ah, middle. Oh man, I thought middle, middle, a hey, middle Senate were carrying, bro. Oh, I forgot on um, Bros can be that shell thing too. Family, bro. You can't beat the family. KO! This war was not an easy one to win, which might seem surprising given how the Sonic series is not afraid to show how tough its cast is, while Mario's comes across as more cartoony. But as it turns out, Bowser mm. had everything he needed to take Chrome Dome down. Strap in! This one's a lot, so we'll break it down into five categories. First up is physical stats. Bowser pretty handedly outmatched any of Eggman's usual mechs, like the Egg Dragoon or the Death Egg Robot. The Death Egg Robot could level cities. Bowser could punch a castle out of orbit. The Death Egg could destroy stars, but Yoshi could match that level of power, and Bowser's strength is certainly above the green dinosaurs. Plus, while both Bowser and Eggman's tech survive black holes, Bowser's was much larger. So, he may win stats, but this could change with their powers. With so many items and minions, that could make all that a moot point. Aside from power-up items, both could manipulate minds, create duplicates, and alter space-time. However, Bowser had a significant edge in having access to the majority of his abilities at all times. Yeah, Eggman can do some crazy stuff, but only across different mechs, fortresses, or space bases. Bowser's all natural. He's got all his best powers built in, and he ain't even a robot. Meaning he wins the War of a 
nutrition. He even had counters for battle enders like the metal virus and spatial displacement trap. Context matters for those weapons and both backfired in the past, but more importantly, Bowser could simply reverse the effects with his transmutation magic. Conversely, most of Eggman's robots could get turned into, say, a frog or a block with no reliable way back. Bowser takes the edge in powers. But definitely not for intelligence. Come on, you have a four-digit IQ, Bowser? Really? That's cute. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bowser's not an idiot. Usually, just really, really clumsy. Poor fella. Meanwhile, Eggman's an engineering genius who rarely ever gets bested by brains. Easy dub. Now, let's talk trump cards. As in, items so powerful. See, I, I thought metal, metal, metal thing was supposed to be his trump card. Well, they could decide the entire outcome on their own. The Phantom Ruby was super dangerous, but specifically targets perceptions. Unlike Bowser's Wonder Flower, which mucks up reality for real. The Ruby affected a whole planet, but the Wonder Flower had the power to alter the universe. Universe. Also, the Dream Stone's ability to wish anything out of existence would have no problem cleaning up Super Neo Metal Sonic or Time Eater. Their most prized possessions was a tougher call. Together, the Chaos Emeralds can break the universe, but so can the Grand Stars. Arguably not as much given the Emerald scaling to Solaris, though Power Stars and Grand Stars are far more plentiful. Clearly, this is getting fairly abstract, and both had multiple options that could win the day instantly, so the safest bet is to call this category a tie. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. It's finally time to compare their armies. Eggman seems deadlier at first glance. I mean, look at all those buzz saws and rockets. Metal Sonic speed and power alone could solo most of the Koopa Troop, but the Eggman Empire lacked something Bowser had in space. The teammate, friend of the power of teammate and family and stuff like that. Teamwork and loyalty. Yeah, yeah see that? It, I knew it was that. The power of friendship and all that stuff. Eggman is a notoriously terrible team player. His alliances are practically guaranteed to fall apart. Hell, in Sonic Generations, he could barely manage working with himself. Eggman's army is designed to be controlled by just him. To Eggman, it's harder to command those with free will, hence his rivalry with the free-natured Sonic. Meanwhile, the Koopa Troop follows Bowser because they actually like him. They train really hard to cover each other's weak points. Give giving them plenty of advantages as this war progressed, like battlefield control through King Boo's magic and Bowser Jr.'s paint. And since the Koopa Troop doesn't rely that much on technology, Sage's hacking potential had little use. Also, secret weapon? Kamek is kinda busted. Canceling Metal Sonic's power copying, stealing the Phantom Ruby, and potentially swapping the Chaos Emeralds were huge game changers. Add on that Bowser and his army can use any Mario power-up item, and they had millions, no, billions of combinations that the Eggman Empire just could not actively plan against. Even with Sage's millions of plans to take down the Titans, she thought them to be un unbeatable, which Sonic proved was incorrect. Just comparing their conquests makes it clear. The Eggman Empire took over the whole planet, but Bowser's troop conquered most of the universe. Eggman was no pushover. His wit, power output, and ridiculous machines gave Bowser the biggest fight of his life. But the Koopa King's ludicrous strength, abilities, and united forces ultimately prevailed. Eggman tried to poach the king, and now he's cracked and scrambled. The winner is Bowser. Next time on Death Battle. Who the next one? Oh. Subscribe. Among Us versus Fall. I mean Fall Guys. That's crazy, bro. That is gonna be a weird one. That's a weird one right there. I'm not gonna hold. You. I don't know who's gonna win that one right there, but yeah, man. Yeah, we know, man. League of Bananas is not a good stuff, man. Let's go.